Ti 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 ti. Oh, hello, folks. I'm back again here doing some more glazing. Give the bucket a good stir. Now these these were some some pictures that we we threw a little while ago. Uh, I think they were 14 ounces, the 14 ounce pictures, that video. Uh, these are now, they've been through the bisque firing and um, I'm going to glaze glaze them so, without further ado as they say <laughs> do they Simon right so here we go so first of all we need to ask ourselves well how are we going to glaze this well usually when I have like a board of pots I, depending on how many I've got this is most of these ones that I've got here what I'll do is I'll say, okay, well, I'll have so and so, so many will be like that, and so many will be like the other, you know, in terms of how I glaze them. These ones, what I'm going to do is glaze the inside and then glaze them down to approximately there where my finger is, a line there, and do the handle. All right, so let's just make sure we're in the picture. Yep, good. Okay. So, so I'm going to pour inside first, like that, and now we're going to, to pour out like that, now we're going to take it dip it and the handle. Well, that's great, Simon, thank you, but we didn't see a lot there because it was all hidden in the bucket. <laughs> now, sometimes when you do this dipping down into the bucket, uh, you don't always get it absolutely dead straight. So you have to ask yourself the question, are you the kind of person that that really annoys you, that if it isn't absolutely dead straight, or are you a little bit more laid back and you can live with it like that? Uh, there's not a right way or a wrong way, it's just, I think it's often it's just down to temperament, people's temperament, how they are. You know, some people are a bit more perfectionistic, if you know what I mean. Perhaps we can get a better angle here, looking down in the bucket. So, let's do... I don't want to be too coming across the camera. Move that down a touch. Okay, so right here's an, here's another one. So we're gonna pour in like that. I generally just swill it around like that a bit. Okay, now. You want to take it, just touch it till you hear it go bloop, and then just go straight down. All right, and then do the handle. You just got to, by practice, well that one you see I've just done is not, is not dead straight. I'm trying to get them straight, but you know, if they're not dead straight, well, I'm not going to cry about it too much. Some things are nice if they're not straight. Not everything has got to be dead straight, you know. We're so sort of conditioned to symmetry, symmetry you know, having to be. Now this one, I want to do a bit less. Symmetrical or asymmetrical? is the question. Now you see these guys here, they've got like a, a combed 
decoration, decorative bit that I did when I threw it, you see. Now these ones I'm not covering down quite so so far. So I'm going to stop just at the top. So this, uh, I, I generally wind my wrist up like that, you see. Start to pour and then unwind as I go. So take that down as, as level as I think I, it is, I can be, and then just down. That's a good one. It's quite, it's quite level. You know, things, you know, talking about symmetry and such. Well, can you imagine nature, if everything in nature, you know, you went out into your garden and every blade of grass was absolutely dead vertical, you know, every, you know, it would kind of look, look, look a bit funny, wouldn't it? So, there's nothing wrong in asymmetry in your work, actually. Uh, you know, it's just a... Uh, I'll do that one a bit further. Sometimes, you know, a pot, if it's a... If it's, if it's got some asymmetry to it, is not is actually more is more beautiful. It's more interesting. You see, yeah, there is beauty in irregularity, but you have to have the eyes to see it. We, you know, we don't always we don't always see it because we are. It's more of a, a, a an eastern. more of an Eastern approach to, to beauty, whereas we in the West are more, we tend to be more, I guess because we're more, we're more of an engineering type of mind maybe. <laughs> Says he, and I was an engineer before I was a potter, working on a, on a centre lathe. Factory in England making helicopters. Well, this is not. This is not really. It, you could say, well, this is not engineering. Well, it, it is actually in a way. You know, I'm still. I'm still going round and round on a wheel. You see, on a potter's wheel instead of a lathe. But it's the same. It's the same thing, isn't it? Really. Now, wait a minute, I've got to, some of those ones I'm going to glaze differently. I'm going to double dip some of these actually, I think. Double dip. You all know how to double dip, don't you? One more and then we'll double dip the rest. I'm a double dipper. La, 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 la. Dee, 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 dee. Hang on, are we in the picture? Let's, let's. Uh, let's bring it back a little bit uh, like that. See. Okay, so these these guys here. Now, before you do double dip, you want to make sure you've got enough depth in the bucket. I think I have. All right. So, one finger on the rim there, one finger on the base. We're going to go down and up, and we're going to glaze the inside and the outside all at once. Let's see if we can do it. Down. And then up a touch and then like that. Okay, so he's glazed now on the inside and the outside. I'm going to take him and put him here on the board. 
that. I'll take that bit of glaze back in the bucket there. Okay, again. Take him down as far as you need to go, an upper touch, and then like that. So you've got to jerk it. Jerk it. What happens is the glaze sploshes up on the inside then. But you can't, you don't want to take it out, out of the glaze when you're doing it, otherwise air gets in and it doesn't work. A very useful technique to know for for glazing. And as you can see, it's pretty quick. And there's no clean off, you see, because I'm not I'm not making the bottom of the pot. I'm being careful not to get the bottom covered in glaze. I just go down so far. Last one. We've got a little bit of glaze on in there, look, see? That was a splash, splosh. There it is, folks. That is some double dipping as well as some um, dipping just on the just on the inside these ones on the end here just over the over the over the top over the shoulder as it were and over the handle and then those ones on the end are double dipped <coughs> i highly i highly recommend that you learn how to double dip if you are in any way thinking of making pots you know making more than just hobby pots if you aspire to be more than just a hobby potter, then learn how to double dip. It's, it's one of those things, it's like learn how to tap centre, you know, uh, etc. Learn to finish your pots without having to trim every pot. You see, these are not trimmed at all. Trimming, trimming is one of the biggest wastes of time that people get involved with, because they're they're spending their time trimming pots that don't need trimming. They shouldn't be trimmed. They should be thrown properly, and then they don't need trimming. You just use your throwing stick. There you go again, Simon, beating that drum. <laughs> hey, folks, thanks for joining us. I hope this has been helpful to, to, to you out there. And um, please visit my website, simonleachpottery.com. If you haven't subscribed to my video channel, you've been watching it for years, and you've been, and you, but you've never subscribed, then please go there and, and subscribe. All right? Uh, I appreciate that, if you could do that. And, um, yeah, check out the website. And we are also on Facebook, of course. You can find me on Facebook, for now, anyway. Unless I, unless I uh, decide to elope, <laughs> elope from Facebook, it annoys me. Facebook, I don't know. I guess it annoys other people out there as well. I guess I'm not the only person that it annoys, but we we kind of like become part of this this thing, haven't we? And uh, I don't see that it's it's all good by any means. It has it. It has its. It has its uses, I suppose, but anyway, won't go on about that. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, folks, and um, yeah, as ever, keep practicing. You see, whatever you do that is a skill that you need to acquire is going to demand a certain amount of practice, all right? So don't be discouraged or disheartened if you're not getting immediate results. Most likely you won't, and you're going to need to repeat it again and try it again and do it again and fail again and fail again, and then you'll start to begin to, to, to get it little by little, and it'll come to you. So keep, keep at it. Keep, keep up the practicing. Okay? I'll see you. Bye-bye.